welcome to the show. Thank you. And congratulations on genuinely one of the most surprising memoirs I've read recently. Really? Um, yeah, because I, I didn't know what to expect, uh -huh. but I didn't expect it to be as candid as it is. Mm -hmm. There's ups, there's downs, there's joy, there's pain. One of the things I didn't expect is how much of a prankster you are. Yeah, oh, well, I am. Uh, you know, things in the White House are always pretty serious. And uh, so I like to make a little fun and have a, uh, a good time. So one of the pranks that I pulled, um, we were leaving on Air Force Two, and I was coming from school, and uh, I'm a teacher. And so um, I was waiting and waiting for Joe, and he didn't get there. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to get in the overhead. So I climbed up on the <laughs> Most people would text, but yes, yes, <laughs> carry on. So I got up on the table and I opened it and I climbed in. And then the first pe when they started, the staff came onto the plane and I hid and I had it down. And the first person that came to put their bags in, I, <gasps> boo! <laughs> <laughs> and like... he, he screamed for like 20 minutes. <laughs> And I, I don't, bl of all the things I would expect to find in an overhead bin, I can safely say the second lady of the United States <laughs> is not one of them. Um, you also, you also wrote I love you to, to Joe on, on like the White House windows I one did. day. I did, I did. As like, I mean, that's like graffiti and vandalism. <laughs> But, but, like, how do you... He loved it. Yeah, I mean, of course he did. And it feels like that's been a lot of your relationship, uh -huh. is finding the joy even in the serious moments. Is that what has kept you together for so long, is, is being able to laugh and share that joy yeah. together? Yeah, I think it is. I mean, we do try to have the, the lighter moments, as you say. Right. And, uh, so that's part of our relationship. Yeah. Your, your, your journey has been one of ups and downs. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you talk in the book in, in really heart-wrenching and, and, and vulnerable ways about the loss that you ex your family has experienced. And that's become one of the things that has, in many ways, been a part of your story mm -hmm. for the American public, is the loss of the Bidens. When you talk about losing a son, when you talk about losing additional family members and the pain that you experience, how do you think that has changed how you view the people that you meet out there in America? Because a lot of people connect to you because yeah. of that loss. Well, you know, I think uh, after we lost our son, Bo, one of the things Joe and I decided was we had to find purpose in our lives. And there are so many people who are affected by cancer. And so we started our Biden Cancer Initiative so that we go all around the country and talk to people um, who've, uh, you know, experienced cancer. And I bet if I ask this audience, I bet every single one of you knows someone who has died of cancer, has cancer, right now. Yes, see, you're shaking your heads. So we've tried to find purpose and, uh, you know, break down the silos and bring people together and right. get information out to people. You, you connect with the people on that level. You connect with people on a very different level in your profession. Mm -hmm. um, being a teacher meant that you were the first uh, I would say second lady yeah, in, the, right. in, in the White House uh -huh. who had a full-time job. Yeah. Which is a very strange thing when you think about it. I mean, it's the White Why House. Why is it strange? No, no, no. When, because, no, no, no. I think it's amazing, <laughs> but it's strange because of the precedent that uh -huh. has been set. You, it's like, you know, like your husband's in the White House and you're like, all right, well, I'm, I'm going to work. Was that strange for some people? To, like, even the people at well, your school? This is so funny because a lot of my students did not know I was second lady. And uh, no, <laughs> this is the truth. This is the truth, because they're working, they, you know, they're going to school, they have kids, jobs, etc. So I can remember the end of the first semester, I was giving a grade conference, and a woman came in and she said, Dr. B, I saw you on the TV last night with Michelle Obama. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, yes. And she said, and I said, Mom, Mom, come here. That's my English teacher. <laughs> and her mother said, that's not your English teacher. That's the second lady of the United States. <laughs> oh, so. I'm picturing them calling the dad, and they're like, dad, dad, who's that? It's like, that's the lady from the overhead compartment. <laughs> <laughs> it's like layers of who you are in this world. Uh, <laughs> you. You love education. I it do. is something that you have dedicated your life to. Yep. Um, and this is something that uh, Vice President Biden has just unveiled his education yes. plan yesterday. What was interesting, though, is that it, it states that educators deserve a partner in the White House. With President Joe Biden and First Lady Jill Biden, you'll get two.
That's right. That's a very clear indication that you won't just be a passenger in this journey, you would be a co-pilot in discussing how America treats and shapes education. What do you think needs to be done? Because clearly, it is broken right now. Yes. What do you think needs to be done? Well, the one thing I say to Joe all the time is that, you know, we have to make our education policy teacher-centric. You know, the teachers have to give the input. We can't be, like, looking at them and saying, okay, this is what you have to do. The teachers have to be saying, this is what we want. And so we want a, a secretary of education who's a teacher. <laughs> and, and we want to raise up the profession. I mean, we are professionals. We want to be paid like professionals and respected like professionals. Right. Especially when you're responsible for shaping the yeah. future. Yeah. Uh, some, some have said that they think America needs to shift the way it thinks of education. You know, I, like, I won't lie, I've been shocked by how college-centric America has been or is. Uh -huh. You know, it seems like that's the uh -huh. only path you can take when in many countries, for instance, Germany, they've shown that vocational training is as important, mm -hmm. as lucrative, mm -hmm. and, and, I mean, I think it means that their workforce, kids that leave school there join the workforce at a rate of 80%, and in America, it's below 50%. Do you think that, you know, America can reshape what sure. education means and how people are taught? Absolutely. And, you know, I teach in a community college. And the interesting thing was, uh, this semester, I taught Trevor's book. And... Uh, oh, wow. And my students... <laughs> yes! Have you read it? Have you read his book? Thank you. Yeah. So, my students loved the book, and I got uh, the Audible tape, and they listened to it, and um, they loved Trevor's mother loved her because she was such a strong influence on him and gave him confidence and faith and believed in education. Right. And you're, we all said, we want her as our mother. So, right. you know, I... I but they also I, loved me. I'm from reading the book. I'm assuming. <laughs> I'm... No, they uh, loved your mother more, I hate to tell you. All right, let's move on. <laughs> um... <laughs> Let's talk about what is looming over the Biden ho household right now, and that is the campaign. You are beginning Looming. on a journey. It is, it really, Looming. because it's such a big yeah. undertaking. You have embarked on this journey two times previously. Uh -huh. This is your third time. You know how hard it is. You know how taxing it is. You know how invasive it is. You know how um, vitriolic it is going to be. Why would you do it? Why do you think Joe Biden should get back into it? And as his running partner, I mean, not his mate, but the person who's going to be on the campaign trail with him, like... Are you, are you guys ready for what's about to happen to your lives? Well, you know, the last two years, people have been coming up to me in the supermarket, in airports, wherever I go, and saying, your husband has to run, your husband has to run. And we, we weren't going to run, but then we kept hearing this, you know, this sort of rhythm, this role. And, uh, and so we started to think about it. And then we called, our, well, we called our family together. We spoke to our children. We got our grandchildren all together. And we said, what do you think? Do you think Pop should run for president? And because if you, it's going to be nasty and it's going to be hard. And if you don't want Pop to do it, we will not do it. And to a grandchild, they said, Pop has to run. He has to change the direction and bring people together and stop all this vitriol in this country. When you, when you look at... Thank you. When you look at the hurdles you've had to overcome... Just to get uh -huh. to this point, you know, your husband is the front runner in the Democratic primary race right now. And there are obstacles that you've already had to face. You know, for instance, um, there was the story of him just being too misogy mm -hmm. with people, you know? And, and at, as to everyone's, everyone said, not in a sexual way, not... A, they were just like, we just... You know, some women were like, we, we weren't comfortable with that. You both came out and, and, and you spoke to it. Do you think that it is, it is strange or fair that sometimes you will get asked about things that should be asked to your husband, or do you think that's part of the game? No, I, I think that's part of it. And I think, look, you know, it takes... It took a lot of courage for, uh, for women to step forward and say, you know, you're in my space, and, uh, and Joe heard that. And uh, it, it just won't happen again. I mean, right. he heard what they were saying. And so that's part of it. I mean, when you run together and I'll be out there with him on the came campaign trail, because I really do believe myself that he will make the best president. So I'll be out there. Well, we'll see you there. We'll be following the race. Congratulations on an amazing memoir. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming yes. to the show. Thank Wonderful you. seeing you. <laughs> Where the Light Enters is available now. Dr. Jill Biden, everybody.